Welcome back, Seven Days to Die modding fans. This is Ziff. And today I want to show um, a little project that I'm working on to uh, help lower the barrier for folks to uh, do modding in Unity with seven, for Seven Days to Die. So what I've done is I've created a master project template that has everything a new Unity person uh, would need to, to be successful uh, creating Unity objects, entities, blocks, or whatever in, um, in a template. In this template file, uh, I've uploaded as a zip file onto my uh, GitHub repo under the directory templates and utilities. You'll see it right here, tutorial project template. All tutorials I'll do in the future related to making things in Unity will be based on this project template. Um, you can make your own, but this has um, pretty much set up uh, for success. Inside of that, um, uh, if, if you go to the templates folder here and you click on the tutorial project template, you'll see a download button. You can click on download and save a copy of that to your desktop. Uh, you'll get a little warning that downloads are, couldn't be dangerous, yeah, but we'll keep it. And it, it's a zip file right there. So you see um, that, that has, should have shown up on my desktop and there it is right there. If I double click on that, you'll see inside of that zip file is a folder called zip tutorials. That is a project folder, a Unity project folder. And inside of that project folder, you have things like your assets and various packages and all your settings, uh, project settings that you will need. There's also, um, I, I included one little modlet to get started um, uh, to do a tutorial on. It's already preloaded there for you, but I'll show you how you, how you load that. So now that you have that, uh, when you set up Unity, when you loaded Unity on your uh, PC, and you should load Unity 2018.2 in some version of that, um, you will get a save a location for your project files on your computer. Now, in my case, I use users, public, public documents, Unity projects. And you see, I already have two Unity projects in there, one for A17 and one for A16. So all you have to do is take this um, zip file, the folder out of the zip file that you downloaded and drag it into your Unity projects directory. It'll just take a minute. Uh, it's not that large of a project file, um, but it will show up in a moment. And there it is. Now you have three, I have three projects there. You'll have um, just one. So how do we go ahead and, and use that? Well, uh, we'll close this and we'll start up Unity. 2018. As you can see, I use Unity uh, 2018.2.0.f2. Uh, you can use any version of Unity 2018.2 that you want. Um, there's some later patches out. You can load that. It should still work fine. Now, when you bring yours up, you probably won't see this here. You'll just, uh, it'll be blank or say a new project. Click on open and come to the particular the new one here is the tutorials and select folder and it will start that one up and then the next time you open up unity that will be a choice like you saw on the screen there but again if you don't see it don't panic just click open and click on it so here we go here's the here is the default project what is different about it um, than just starting a blank one on your own is two important things one it already has the export asset script included in the assets folder so when you uh, click on something and you and you uh, go to export it, then oh, I could do that right now. I'll just drag this sucker over here. When you go to click on it, you'll have that build asset bundles from selection folder here. And we'll cover that. Um, we probably showed that in other videos, but I'll probably cover it, it again as well. Uh, let me go ahead and just delete that out of there. Okay. So let's say I had not put this any of this in here at this point and it would just be blank. You need to be able to put projects into Unity. Now, if uh, someone has already done a project file for you, in the case of the tutorial, this, this one here, um, it's called Fun with Flags. And if I just drag that, and just drag it anywhere on the screen, and you'll see it'll pop up Fun with Flags. And this is a package, a Unity package. I've packaged up a something I've worked on, and you can add that package to the project. So here we have the FBX file, which is the actual um, the meshes and so on in there. Uh, some image files, uh, a material already created, and so on and so forth. So that you would just click import, 
and it will bring it in and then it would pop up here in your asset folder if you didn't have anything there. So now we have an asset, um, basically an asset uh, in there we can work with and it's right, I used uh, flag looted, the flag looted, uh, that should be the whole FBX file. So I'm gonna drag that in there and just onto my scene and there is that flag you file. It's all set up, ready to go. If you click the play button, you'll see the flag waving and it's all good to go. All right. So if you wanted to go ahead and, and make your own flag, uh, you would go from there. And I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna cut it here and save that for another video. Uh, to close this one out, once you have an object dragged over, um, you're dragging that object over like I did here. Let me go ahead and delete this. And you can say, if I drag this over here, there it is. You right click, build asset bundle. I could save it to my desktop. And I'll just call it whatever I want, flag test and click save. And it will build that asset bundle and put it out. The other thing that I've added in this project template that's a little um, um, different basically is tags. Now, when you start up a blank project, you're gonna get just a default Unity tags in there, which are no help at all for seven days to die. What I've done here is pre-populated, it scrolls off the screen, all of the different tags that I'm aware of that's being used currently in seven days to die. Um, I won't explain all of these, but the ones that are most important to you tend to be TMeshB. That's for, you know, if you want to interact with uh, loot containers or so on and so forth, you, or be able to pick something up. Um, not, not when you dropped it, but if you've placed a block and you want to pick it back up, you need to have that tag on it. Uh, and I've done that here, as you notice in this particular one here. Um, on the actual object itself, not the empty parent container, which is always set to zero, as I said before. Going ahead and it's tagged TMeshB on that um, child. And you don't have to go ahead and tag these other ones, but uh, on this child it's tagged and that way you'll be able to interact with it. So you've got a working tag manage, you've got the exit script and you've got a project that's all pre-configured for success. So each tutorial that we do, uh, we'll use this. And uh, the next uh, tutorial I'm gonna do using this will be show you how to make your own uh, flags um, that uh, uh, so you don't have to um, depend on me to make the flag that you want. So with that, um, I hope um, you find this useful and uh, have a great day.